Hey everybody, I'm back. I'm Elisa and we are talking about the respiratory system and I just want to take a quick, super fast look at alveolar ventilation with you. So um, the alveoli, right, so these are the little grape looking structures within the lung that are increasing the surface area so that we can have that gas exchange. It's also where the capillaries are going to be wound around them so that we can actually have that point of gas exchange from the circulatory system. Um, so uh, not only air that enters the alve alveoli is available for gas exchange. Yeah, so like you're not getting a gas exchange in the nose and, and the trachea and all of that. So, you know, there's that. So um, basically what we have is about 150, like the average-ish individuals, um, respiratory system, it's in the conducting zone, right? We talked about like the trachea and the bronchi and all that good stuff. Um, and, and it's not useful for the purpose of gas exchange, right? It's just the pathway. It's just this, you know, highway to the alveoli or the site of gas exchange. So there's that. Um, so uh, it can somewhat be altered by sympathetic dilation, right? So a little bit of expansion there if the sympathetic nervous system does engage. Um, but it just only is there to allow more airflow into the lungs, into the alveolar sacs, but not like all of a sudden start being able to exchange gas with the circulatory system itself. Um, so there's that. Um, in pulmonary disease, some of the alveoli are unable to exchange gases. And so things that can cause that. Um, number one, like loss of surfactant or um, surfactant that is not being made properly or is blocked by excess mucus or fluids or all of that. Um, this is where vaping kind of comes into play. Uh, there's some data now to suggest that uh, like the different types of chemicals in the vaping, I guess, liquid um, can actually change or eliminate that um, surfactant on the alveoli, causing them to collapse, co resulting in lung collapse, right? Um, so yeah, there's, there's some interesting things to look up there. Um, other things could be, you know, from traditional tobacco type smoking. So ash, tar, any kind of inhalants physically, just physically clogging up and blocking those spaces as well. Um, right. So if a person inhales like half a liter, so like half of a two liter of Coke or Pepsi, for example, right? Like a half a liter um, of air, or I guess it would be a quarter of one. Yeah. Um, some of it is going to stay in, I just don't love this term, anatomical dead space. It is not anatomical dead space. It is gas exchange dead space. Maybe that would be the more accurate way to say that. So that means like around 350 milliliters reaches the alveoli. Um, so it's not a ton. It's like a large water bottle for the most part. Um, so alveolar ventilation rate is the AVR. So this is what that sounds for. And you're going to see a lot of these acronyms. So just like, you know, get ready for that. Um, if you're going to make some flashcards, on the acronyms would be good. Uh, air that ventilates the alveoli is going to be, um, so that's that quantity of 350 milliliters, theoretically, of, of gas to be exchanged, um, times the respiratory rate, which is like uh, 12 breaths per minute, like, 10 to 12, kind of depending on where you're at, um, means you're looking around like 4,000 milliliters per minute. So that's like a lot. Um, and so this measurement is crucial when we're looking at the body's ability to um, oxygenate the tissues and dispose of carbon dioxide, right? It's really the exchange. Like how fast is that turnover? How much volume can we use in the process of turning over, getting that fresh new oxygen in and expelling the appropriate abundance of carbon dioxide, right? To keep that pH in the blood just so and so perfect. Um, and then you also have this other type. So there's this thing called residual volume. And like, if you would think about it, if you were to push all of the air out of the lungs, the lung would collapse, right? The alveoli would slap down on themselves, the surfactant would stick to each other, and you have collapsed lungs. So you always have to have like this like leftover amount of air that just kind of keeps the space open, right? Just keeps it open. And so that's what we talk about um, residual volume. So that is the amount of air that you can't really expel 
even with your maximum effort, because you just need to have your lungs not collapse, right? They need to stay somewhat open, right? So that's what that means. Okay, um, I hope that was super helpful, and we'll get into that a little bit more, especially things like re residual volume and, you know, some other stuff that's coming up. Um, but in the meantime, I hope that was helpful, and I hope you're out there somewhere having a great day. All right, bye-bye.